Hello and welcome to Records Rebuilds. As you can see right behind me, the double salvage Corvette made it all the way from Wichita to Bowling Green, Kentucky. 1400 miles round trip without any problems. Uh, the NCM bash was just awesome. I met three people there who had seen the channel and knew who I was, uh, which was really awesome. So uh, thank you, uh, Chente and David and Bobby. And uh, actually, Bobby has his own uh, YouTube channel about um, you know the kind of C8 Z06 experience. So I'll put it in the links uh, down below. And um, uh, yeah, I, just a lot of information. So today's video is gonna be about uh, the information, the things that I learned that are new to me. Um, it's, it's just gonna be really jam-packed from the beginning when we'll talk about you know uh, potential release date, uh, all the way to the end when we talk about you know possible information about electric cars, uh, electric Corvettes. We're going to have uh, videos with direct quotes from the engineers themselves and we will get you through it as fast as we possibly can. My whole goal is to make this video as short as we possibly can and get you all that new information. Uh, so uh, if that's the type of thing you're interested in, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Our first clip is Harlan Charles answering a question about when Z06 pricing will be available. He states that it should be available well before the first orders go in. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. We have no announcement at this time. We can't leak it because we don't know what it is. <laughs> but we will have it in all seriousness. We will have the, um, the pricing... Uh, our goal is to have it all uh, sent out well before official ordering goes in, so you don't have to order blind. Awesome presentation. Um, no one else has asked, so I'll ask when you expect production to begin with the Z06. Well, we've been pretty consistent in saying summer. <laughs> September 21st, technically. <laughs> The most important thing for you all to remember, like we often say, is we are going to start production when the car is ready. And we are very sure about our quality uh, and all of our suppliers' quality and uh, we're, that your experience is going to be the best it can be. And so even when we start production, I would caution uh, people to remember that we are going to do it in a measured way and we're going to make sure they're right and we're going to build as many great Z06s as we can. Okay, so Harlan says the car is still on track for a summer launch. We believe it's also still on track for orders to go in in the spring. So we think about the latest orders could go in would be June 16th or so. And if that's the case, he's saying they're going to try to get the pricing out well in advance of that. So maybe pricing revealed end of May or early June with production starting in August or even as late as September. But you heard him say the most important thing is they're gonna get the car right before they launch it. Another announcement at the bash, we've known that the C8 Z06 with Z07 package can run the quarter mile in 10.6 for quite some time now, but we now have a trap speed to go with that. It's 10.6 at 131 miles per hour. We also found out that if you are buying a 70th anniversary package, that car will come with these wheels. Even if it is a Z06, Z07, you cannot buy the carbon fiber wheels with the 70th anniversary package. Speaking of the carbon fiber wheels, we've known for some time that the steering programming is a little bit different for that package. I spoke with Josh about that and he stated that when they were doing some of their final testing out in Arizona, they realized that the cars with the carbon fiber wheels felt a little too twitchy in touring mode. So the sensitivity was turned down on those cars uh, to help them drive better. Um, we talked about the fact that you really would not be able to alter that calibration 
after the car is delivered, uh, you know, the dealer or anybody else would not be able to change that for you. Um, he did say that if you're planning on using two different types of wheels, it might be better uh, to buy the carbon fiber wheels and then um, just deal with the little bit of decreased sensitivity in touring mode um, that would happen if you switch to the regular aluminum wheels. Another cool feature that's coming to the C8 Z06 will be custom launch control. Josh made the point that uh, the regular launch control would probably work better, but if you want to, uh, you'll be able to set the RPMs and the slip percent for your launch. They also got the chance to point out that there was a bit of a miscommunication at Sebring, and the Z06 does not have magneto rheological engine mounts. Uh, does the uh, Z06 engine mount use uh, oh. magnetic right technology to help pull the vibrations in air or flat plane crank? No. The Corvette, the same rank as the Z06, the question was do they use MR magneto rheological engine mounts, not in reverse, which of course we do. And the answer is no. Uh, we do not. Um, the, there was some confusion over looking at the cutaway chassis that there might be a wire going to the mount. There's no wire going to the mount. Uh, uh, we have investigated that. We've talked about it. It's uh, not a new idea, uh, but it's not provided, at least in our applications, in our mount system, meaningful benefits. So they are more standard in construction. They also talked a lot about all the testing the Z06 has been through. The first time they put the LT6 in the car and on the dyno was 2018. The first time they autocrossed the car was 2019. And just here in April of 2022, they put the car on the track for 24 straight hours, 44 sessions, and pushed it as hard as they could, and it did great. They also made some changes to the dual clutch transmission. The new Z06 transmission is called the M1M, and it's essentially the same as the Stingray's transmission, except it's been strengthened in a few places, and uh, there's an additional odd clutch plate. Of course, as we've known for a long time, it does have a different final drive ratio than the Stingray transmission. Finally, I'll just leave you here with a pretty entertaining conversation about the future electric Corvette and the comment that the V8 Corvettes will be around for many years. Okay, over here. Um, let's talk electric Corvettes. <laughs> Is there a plan to make it sound like a Corvette? And if so, <laughs> 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 Is this Shane LaMarche? <laughs> Doesn't your husband work for GM? He doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he gets to keep his job like we do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you and Jess are going all the way home to Tennessee. I'll tell you when I get to move in your basement. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because we don't have a basement. We're going to our safe room. <laughs> there was no response. There was no response. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into what we may or may not do, obviously, but uh, one thing that's always been true uh, for men, I know there's a lot of <laughs> angst and worry about what our future might be, uh, but we have never adopted technology that doesn't make the car better. It doesn't improve the driving experience, it doesn't wow all of you, uh, and propel the, the brand forward. And we are not going to uh, change something to meet some deadline or implement technology that, that lessens the power of the driving experience. So that's the way we'll try to round it up, answer that question. And if we make a change like that, it will be every bit perfect. Yeah, I want to to. Obviously, we can't talk too much other than what was, you know, was kind of teased. But I will say, you know, when reading, again, we read the forums, and there's a lot of misunderstanding there. These things 
refugees as additions to Corvette lineup, not as subtractions. So the V8s we all love and enjoy will be here for quite a while in the years to come.